Lauren, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm missing Dubai. I'm feeling a little jealous that you're there right now, but not jealous of the crazy heat. So I think I'd, I'll stick to where I'm at. Where are you now? Right now, Colombia. And then tomorrow I'm going to I'm gonna go to like the coffee region, actually. Do you drink coffee? Yeah, I love coffee. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so you have not had coffee if you're used to like Dubai and London coffee. When you come to Colombia, there's this entire region which is like where they export a ton of the coffee from in the world. They also have yeah. it in like Ecuador as well. So tomorrow I'm going to the actual coffee region. So I cannot wait to drink some of that. It's going to be so good. And um, yeah, so just traveling around is fun. Amazing. About to find out how that coffee, how that coffee is, and I'm sure it's going to be amazing. I want to jump straight in. Obviously, we've heard from your bio, like background, your history, and how you, where you've come from. I want to jump in and really ask you about your relationship between health and business, which is something that a lot of people really struggle with. Yeah, I mean, to me, you can have a thousand wishes, but if you don't have your health, then you just have one. And so, my background was actually in fitness, which maybe you know already, but. Having built a business in the fitness space, I actually found that I began to resent going to the gym sometimes because I was always having to make content or focus on the business and I would be so tired and exhausted. And then I wouldn't go to the gym and then I would become even more tired and exhausted because I wouldn't go. And it became this pretty bad cycle. And I'm not really one to really skip the gym. So then I would go, but while I would go to the gym, I would continue to just like, message on my phone and so I would kind of half ask my session and so now what I do my literally my hack is just when I get into the gym phone goes on airplane mode I listen to pre-downloaded audiobooks or podcasts while I'm training and that's honestly what's allowed me to just have this rule in my life where I don't touch my phone when I'm at the gym like I literally make rules one time I think James Clear said this, you'd make a decision once and then that decision is then made forevermore and so it then becomes upon you in your mind to stay true and powerful enough to not cave on the pre-made decision. So for me, health is legitimately everything. That's amazing. I actually sort of some of the quotes that you hear from Ali Abdul these days, like the productivity hacks, you know, exactly how to keep going. I know you've, you've, you've done some work with him. So how do you find enough time in your week? Obviously super busy with impact school and other things that's going on. How do you find time to prioritize your actual health, you know, your mental and physical health. So I've always seen things as like multiple different volume dials. So anything that you're trying to get involved with in your life is like a volume dial. So for example, a few years ago, I was single. I legit didn't even care about dating anybody. So I didn't even have a dating or relationships volume dial in my world. But then there are different volume dials like your health and fitness, your walking outside to get steps. Maybe for some people that's combined together. You could have your business, your work, uh, your relationship. Uh, maybe you have this passion that you're wanting to get started on and you want to make it super successful. So that would be something else that's in there. And so for me, what I always try and do is I try and automate as much as possible because like anybody else, I think I'm innately lazy. And so I think my laziness has allowed me to become really efficient in various different things. And so I need to try and find different ways to automate the things that I that I want to be doing. So for example, in the beginning, when I used to be overweight, right? Like I lost more than 40 pounds. And in order to lose that 40 pounds, I had to create habits in my life to empower me to lose the weight. Because let's be honest, losing weight is the easy part keeping it off is the hard part and so i used to see these people in my family who would be really fat and then really thin and then really fat and then really thin and that used to happen to me when i was younger as well and so i thought well if i do what they're always doing which is going on these crashed fad diets and taking these drinks like the weight what's it called slimming world whatever you know if they do all that stuff but it doesn't work then they just always are dieting. So I didn't want that for myself. So I remember the volume dials because I had this habit back then of like studying really hard. So I thought, okay, if I've been able to create a habit in one area, I have evidence that I can create habits in other areas. So then I thought, well, if I take that same mindset that I had here and apply it to my health and fitness, then all I need to just do is just make essentially a routine. Like if you create if you turn a habit into a routine so that it's pretty much impossible not to do it, then it becomes really difficult to actually not do that thing because you're the only one who has an opinion of yourself when no one else is there. So I knew that if nobody else was in the room and I was looking at myself and my actions that day, I wanted to be proud of how I would performed. So here's what I did. 
I essentially started journaling every morning and I didn't do the typical journaling like gratitude and manifestation like to me I'm British right we're pretty cynical so I just thought especially back then that sounds like BS now nowadays I, I kind of I kind of vibe with it a bit more but I was so cynical back then so I just thought I'm gonna look back on this day and I'm gonna be I gave my all to all that I did and then I literally listed all the areas that I wanted to be proud of myself for and next to every area so I would write like hitting 10,000 steps, going to the gym, hitting my macros, being kind to my family or whatever it was. And then at the end of the day, I would come back to it and I would actually rank myself out of 10. So 10 would have been like a star, you legit crushed it this day. Whereas zero would have been like, oh, whoops, I didn't even go to the gym or I didn't take my steps. So essentially that allowed me to have this really close feedback loop where every single day I was literally having like a 16 hour window where from the morning to the evening, I would then be able to hold myself accountable. And I think accountability is the key to success. So to answer your question, nowadays, my volume dial for health and fitness runs on autopilot, despite the fact that I used to be overweight. And I never thought that I would have been the type of person who would have been able to have like consistently stuck to my training and to, to my nutrition. And so I think it's just a how find ways to turn something that you don't like into a habit that you then don't even think about doing because now I know if I don't go to sleep, I feel worse about myself my body feels more sluggish I have less energy and so I try and make the not doing of something positive I try and make the downside like way bigger than you know, the risk of not doing it. that's actually a really super interesting to hear you talk about what you're really talking about there is discipline right you put the system, create that discipline so that you haven't got to decide is it's actually happening or you're going to feel worse. So that was a bit of I want to touch on, on pressure as a young entrepreneur. You know, you know, what's your relationship with, with pressure? How do you cope with the pressure of being an entrepreneur? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's so much pressure of it all the time. And I think one of the things that you have to do as an entrepreneur is try it, to essentially minimize it i don't think you can get rid of the pressure the pressure is always going to be there if you're doing anything big then the pressure will actually be there i think one of the things that at least helps me is when i think about anyone that's doing anything big in the world they face an immense amount of pressure but they don't think of the pressure as pressure they think of the pressure as personal development and so i just see every potential opportunity where i am going to be yeah <laughs> under a lot of pressure i see that as a way for me to grow my skills and to grow myself and then i think well if i can withstand this situation then the next time something that's going to induce a lot of pressure comes upon me then i'm going to be able to rise to the occasion because i have evidence that i've done it before kind of like when you stick to your health and fitness regime right so to, an to answer your question fully i think pressure is always going to be there and being able to understand that it make you stronger what is it pressure creates diamonds but also surrounding yourself with other entrepreneurs who are also facing a lot of pressure i think then you realize that it's normal and then because you normalize it then you realize, like you're not special and the situation isn't something crazy because would you rather have the pressure of running a business or would you rather have the pressure of constantly having to live a life that you don't like because you hate your job yeah, I really like that because I think it's really interesting to understand why you become, or what pressure exists, or why you become nervous. I was in the military and he always says, as soon as you feel nervous, try and understand where it's coming from. Is it, is it because you want to come, or is it because you're scared for your life, or your physical well-being? Like, what actually is coming from? Is understand that. He was telling me this while we were in a queue to go go-karting. We're all nervous. You're really nervous because you want to beat me or you want to beat someone else. And actually understanding that and normalising it, like you said, it's very interesting actually to sort of uncover what's going on inside you so yeah. how important is it to you to keep yourself challenged both i really want to touch here on really almost why you're traveling now right why you're changing your environment so you've got you're super busy you've got um you know personal brands to keep up with why end yourself by putting these you know these these trips and things in the place as well yeah i i think i like this a lot because life would be a lot easier if i just stayed in one place i just worked on my computer between the morning and the evening i went to the gym i took my walk i saw my friends but at the end of the day i don't want to necessarily just live a simple life where i'm just going through the motions 
I don't intentionally travel to create pressure for myself, but I know that through traveling and through seeing the world, there is more different things that I need to balance. Because for example, again, I like to go to the gym, right? I like to walk outside. Well, right now I'm in Colombia and I just had my phone stolen out of my hand a couple of days ago. And so that was crazy stressful. Like these two guys were on a moped and they just grabbed it out of my hand in broad daylight. And so then I had to go, I literally ran home for 20 minutes. I obviously had no phone on me so that I could grab my laptop and I could quickly lock the phone because they grabbed it out of my hand while the phone screen was unlocked. And so in Colombia, for me, to walk outside, you know, my hair is light color, I'm light skin and I have freckles. My, I'm basically ginger. And so then <laughs> obviously I look different to everyone here. So I'm like, it's not safe for me. And so then when it comes to that situation yeah like my environment now i have to change the way that i operate because of how essentially i'm um how I'm going about my 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 travels so i i don't do it on purpose but i want to live a life that's full of experiences and i want to live a life whereby i'm not allowing my business to control absolutely everything for me instead i want to be able to build my business around my lifestyle and to be able to enjoy the life that i'm creating for myself because yeah, like I work really, really hard and I'd rather have like a 70% good travel experience and actually do it rather than just not traveling at all because then the experience is 0% and I'm just going about my normal day to day. Yeah, it makes, I mean, it makes sense. Why not challenge yourself? So you can learn about automation and how important that is to you and obviously the art there of delegation as well. So how, how valuable is that to your life, delegation and, and automation? Yeah, absolutely everything. I try to make everything as efficient as possible. So I don't cook, I don't clean, I don't do anything except the things that I necessarily need or want to do. Obviously, running a business, right? There's going to be things that you have to do that nobody else can do in the beginning so that then eventually you can delegate it out to somebody else. But yeah, I mean, like, I think systems and also being able to find great team members is one of the key skills for someone to have because otherwise for example my dad owns a pub and he's still going on the bar and like pouring the beers because he just he always says like oh i just can't find anyone good to hire you know and so it's quite funny because it's a different way of looking at things but my thought process is if i can't find someone good enough to hire then that's on me and i haven't been able to make a checklist that's clear enough and there's processes that are easy enough to understand by somebody else to follow those processes and so when you're able to take full responsibility of everything i think life becomes harder but also easier because then you stop putting blame on everybody else and you take that ownership meaning that you then become the creator of your potential destiny and i think that's really empowering because when you realize that you are the one who gets to control ultimately where your life is going then you're able to show up with more charisma and with more passion as well because you realize that no these things aren't happening just because the world hates you and you're a victim to the world no things are happening because you're just not good enough and you need to improve your processes the way that you're looking at the world and it's quite hard for a lot of people to hear however when you finally have that moment click in your mind everything changes for you i think that's really powerful and, and i really like the idea of, of ownership <laughs> Something that we've been talking to our members about recently is about keeping time. And if you're, you know, to be early is to be on time, to be on time is to be late, and to be late is unacceptable. Especially in Dubai, you know, you'll have experience of this. Everyone is is late. Something you do recently, which really takes ownership, and I really like this as a sort of creator, is putting a charge. That's cool. Can you talk a little bit to, to the reasoning behind that? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like if you if you take and you figure out what is your typical hour. So how much does your business make? How many hours do you make? When you divide them together, you get a number. And whatever that number is, is how much, if your time was free, that's the actual output that you're bringing into your business. And so I just got really sick and tired of even people wasting my team time. Like my team also have an hourly rate as well, technically. And it depends on how much value they're adding to the business. And so with sales calls, people would schedule a sales call, they'd be really excited, and then they just wouldn't show up. And so I think that's because the different level of interest or intent of a prospect in working with you. And so what I realized was, hmm, well, I want to test something out and I want to test it myself to see if it works. And I'm going to take sales calls. 
And so I opened up my calendar and I said to my team, I was like, make them pay to get on the sales call with me. And my team were like, really? Are you sure you want to try that? Our conversion rate is going to go way down. What if we were to get, you know, a hundred extra people to get on a call with Ben and closes on average 40%. So wouldn't it be better to just get them on with Ben? And I was like, no, because I've noticed Ben's energy is dropping. You know, when they get on with Ben and they don't show, his sure. energy goes down. And then for the rest of that day, the sales numbers all got way low. And I need to be the protector of my team's energy so that they can have the most output possible for my company. And manager, right? so I, um, I tested it and it was crazy. Literally, I had in one week, I had 22 sales calls and I closed all of them all of them. These were only 15 minutes long and they'd already paid a hundred dollars to get on that sales. Call. And then I already had their card info stored in my system. So I just had to run their card. So I didn't even have to close the sale. Really. I was just kind of having a chat with them, processing a payment. So I thought this is interesting. Like I'm not even taking a sales call here. There are no objections to be overcome because they've already watched a video, which is essentially explaining the whole entire process. Like what this thing is, it answers all the potential FAQs. And if they were messaging saying, Hey, I have questions, we would say, okay, just go watch the video. Cause like, it's interesting. You can see we've tracked it so that you can actually see how much percent of the video each person watches. And, uh, the people that had questions, were the ones that didn't watch the video. So then uh, they'd watch the video and then they'd schedule the call. They'd get on the call and the process was so easy. So I thought, hmm, now we need to figure out what's going on here because are they joining? Cause they're on a call with me. Are they joining? Cause they're on a call or are they just joining just because so first of all, took two variables and we tested me on the sales call versus no sales call buying on the page. So they would apply. And if we would accept them, then we would send them straight to a landing page to join. And this conversion was way lower, but it still worked. But what we found is that the people who needed to actually buy from the sales page, they still had some questions via email or via DM. So we thought, okay, well, they still need to speak to someone. So now we know that they need to speak to someone. So now let's change another variable. Either the call with me or the call with someone. Okay. There was no difference between the two. So me taking the call didn't make a difference at all. It was just, they needed to get on a call with somebody. So I'm still taking some of the calls now, just because like I have the hours in the day. And to be honest, all I have to do is get on there for 15 minutes and run someone's card. And I get to from them extra, extra more than they would imagine because it's me. So that's pretty cool. But, um, I like to do things very systematically and test different variables one by one. Cause otherwise you don't know what's working. If you change too many things at once, then what actually, let's say you're trying to lose weight, right? And you start suddenly doing hit training and you change your macros all at the same time. What's actually made the difference for you? You don't really know. Okay. Probably the macros, but you might be telling yourself it's the hit. So you might go back to your old macros and then start gaining weight just by the fact that you're doing hit because you took it to the wrong variable. So to answer your question, like, yeah, it's been, it's been really cool. And I think more people need to value their time more because I just, I value my time so much that I refuse to accept that people are going to take advantage of wasting my time. Because if you're going to waste my time, um, there's more different things that I could be doing with those hours that are going to be actually adding more to the world and also more rewarding for me. And so I've just, as the years have gone on, I've, I, you know, I used to get on, I've been on more than probably, I would love to know the number, but definitely more than a thousand sales calls. And, you know, out of all of them, did I do a thousand? No. Did a lot of them drain my energy? Yes. I don't want that anymore because I think that energy is actually more important than time because you could get on a call with someone for two minutes and they say something that pisses you off. And then for the rest of the day, you could be in a negative mood. And obviously that shows you that you have some personal development to do. But at the same time, it also implies that it wasn't the time that affected you. It was just that one moment that triggered you somehow. And so now you're in a bad state. And obviously that doesn't lead to positive things in any way, shape or form. I, I think protecting your Ties me interesting one because a lot of people, like you say, they put themselves first. They they, do, they they forget that they've got to look after themselves as well. If someone says something bad, like you say, they sort of get they think it's a hard part. It doesn't go as well for the rest of the day. And I really, uh, you know, I think it's really, really cool. To it, even though you don't need to go on these sales calls, a lot of people, you know, could, uh, the position they get people to do different things. But actually, to A B test and to understand that you know the different you know scenarios work. It reminds me of actually of the Lean Startup. It's a great book. Okay? And it's all easy and protecting your time, and it's uh, it really does relate, and actually relates to the next thing I want to talk to you about, which was some of your, your community, and then within a community, you've also obviously got mentors, 
mentors, whether they're natural or not. And you've had some great mentors, you know, anyone, anyone that is online, Lauren, will have seen you've got some, some great mentors. You've done some really cool interviews with people, including Leila Von Mosey, Mark Cardone. And what I want to ask you is, is this is there something between those people that I can name there that you can take away or do the same thing in terms of their self-development or their business? Or are they very different in how they operate? From your well, all of them can. All of them, all of them take their health and fitness very, very seriously. I don't know if that's just because I am attracted to people that take care of their health and fitness. Also, all of them have really strong relationships. So they really, really, really take care of their relationship with their partner over and above anything else. And I think the third thing is they take care of themselves in the sense that they do personal development, whatever that looks like for them, which maybe some of them is self-hypnosis, for some of them is meditation, for some of them is training, for some of them is walking outside. And so I think it's actually, I think the thing that makes the most successful people, like the most successful people successful not because of their business strategy. I think it's all the surrounding things that they do plus the business execution, because if you're only doing personal development all day, meditating and just taking a five hour morning routine, then you get nothing. Whereas if you're just getting stuff done all the time, not taking care of your relationships, not taking care of your health and fitness, you're going to end up being broken in some other way that is going to cause you a lot of problems in the future. So I think it's really that holistic approach. And that's not the answer a lot of people want because a lot of people want to know that they can just take the pill, they can just suddenly have the dream relationship, their business can be at like multiple millions per year just from hustling. But at the end of the day, to be a successful person, I really think it's about all different walks of life and also in the game as well. Like how you see yourself spiritually, spiritually like, you know, and being able to separate the body and so the conscious, like the consciousness and everything. And so I think they all have those components uh, as a whole. And um, that's something which I think actually really allows for a life which is incredibly fulfilling. On mentors now, there's something you constantly look to grow in and to work with. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, um, sorry, I lagged there a bit. Did you ask, do I have mentors now or who are my mentors now? Just, just do you have mentors? You've got to disclose if you don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And I think you can have like mentors who don't even know who you are. And then you can have coaches who you transact with, you pay them money. And so um, to me, it's always about looking at the different areas in my life, my business and the things that I'm looking to improve. Because ultimately, I would rather like pre-handle like problems. And I think if you need to hire someone to like fix a problem that there is right now, then you've left it too late. So for example, I recently started working with someone to help us with our overall operations as we're looking to scale even further and get the business to a level whereby, for example, like lead generation has nothing to do with like my face and I can just make the content that I want to make so that I don't feel like I'm always having to just like get leads on my content. So that's something that I've been working on. It's not like a marketing program or anything. It's very much business operations and it was very much like for my team rather than for me and so that was something that i did because I left that one too late you know oh, i realized that my head of operations was really getting burnt out and obviously to me i needed to take my team's energy over and above anything else so i said to her i was like look i know i trust you to make these type of decisions but like i can see you're struggling like let's join in on this program let's get in there like let's get plugged in and it's been an amazing thing for us and surprisingly for me uh the coaching that i've received from it has been so amazing like i wasn't even expecting that so that was cool and then when it comes to like various different other things i'm right now um I did self-hypnosis for years and it really helped me. So I'm trying to deepen my ability to meditate because I've always found hypnosis to be very beneficial, but meditation, I never necessarily enjoyed much. I don't know what it is. I think maybe I'm someone who's just, I can get hypnotized easily. I don't know, but um, I'm trying right now to find someone who is good for mentorship regarding uh, meditation. And I've been liking Joe Dispenza stuff, but honestly, I think he's more a hypnosis guy. Like, I really think that the way he talks, he's hypnotizing you and it's not meditation. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. You've been trying to find the right one, like hypnosis. And I always think it's not going to work for me, but it's like, maybe I should definitely talk about it, certainly. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. When you find like the right person that you resonate with, 
you can just do it like you can listen to their tracks and it's unbelievable like i used to get really bad panic attacks when i was younger and have heart palpitations all the time and i started doing self-hypnosis constantly and man it just it i don't want to say it cured me but it kind of did <laughs> there you go that's the, that's the takeaway I'll, have to, I'll look into it um there's been lots of people listening to this lauren who want, who want to touch on selling online you know and touch on impact school so i'd love to hear from you what are, what are the common misconceptions that you hear or see about selling your knowledge online yeah well oh man most people really screw up because they how do i put this nicely it's like they put together their work into a masterpiece and they get so much fulfillment through creating and it's so passionate because you love the thing that you do and you're so good at it so you bundle it all together you put it together and you put it out there and you just expect that people are gonna come but it doesn't work that way right actually i think in order to get to your first 100k i think that's the hardest part because you have to get in the reps of actually content out there to get potential leads and if you're not getting leads you need to go and actually contact people and dear god bless you alex homozy because for so long i've been telling people to do outbound on inbound and that's what he calls warm outbound and so it's like anyone that's engaging with you go and reach out to them and i've been telling this to people i'm like if you're doing 100 a day and it's not working then what you're saying is wrong and finally he said it in this book that like millions of people are going to read or listen to and finally people are going to actually listen to to him because <laughs> i won't have to say it so yeah so i think it's just like people don't understand the level of work that it actually takes i used to run these webinars, and I used to do these webinars every single week i did a different webinar every week to my same organic audience until that one webinar would generate me 20k in a week and so i was just doing this again and again and again this is like five years ago now and it was yeah. so knackering because you probably know how long it takes to build a really solid webinar all the things to that all the back-end emails then you want to contact all the people that show up live and all the people that don't show up. man it was a lot of work but it gave me the skill of grit and determination and like if it's not working then okay instead of just the whole business and starting something new it's like what i spoke about earlier it's like taking one variable and then every week testing something different to see what's actually going to be the thing that makes the biggest impact and then from there you just you never stop doing that it's the kaizen approach kaizen is from japanese manufacturing which means continuous improvement and when you improve continuously all the time there is literally no reason why you can't win but most people quit the game so soon that they never win because they think that oh it just doesn't work for me or oh i'm not good enough or oh it's easier for that person because of blah 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 but it goes back to that concept of responsibility and taking ownership over your situation because when you realize that you are the one that can control the variables it's not the market yeah the market reacts but if they don't react to what you're doing then clearly it's not the i couldn't have said it better myself and actually i think it's funny that you touch on homozy after this weekend because i saw that you you know you've been busy busy while he's launching and you know maybe it's time to it's time to write a book line and get it out there so your idea is done paper but it, you know I get the same impression from you and from him you know the saying of um overnight success I'm sure you've heard it before someone said you know Lauren Alex overnight success they, you know yesterday they weren't here today they are here and it's that that grind when you look into it you're talking there about five years ago grinding on webinars and you know you listen to Alex or Rosie over the weekend and he's talking about a similar thing so long ago um it's it's crazy to think and it, it's just, you know, I think one of you said it, I'm sure I'll put it down to you said, um, it's very hard to beat someone that's continues to show up, right? Just keep doing what you're doing and you'll learn. And Kaiser is a fantastic way to, to sort of put that. And it actually brings me on to the next point. Really, really nice. It's very fluid. This is, you're helping me a lot here. Um, I want to touch on perceived success. So as a, as a young, a very young, successful, um, person, what is success to you? How do you perceive your success? Yeah, like, I don't think I'm successful. I think the thing that I feel the most successful with is my relationship, actually. Um, that's the thing that no, makes me feel yeah. like I'm more successful than, yeah, anything else. Because I think I have such an amazing, incredible, healthy relationship. And it's probably the thing that I'm the most, like, from people that we know, that I'm the most, like, complimented on, if that makes sense. Um, but in business, I feel like I'm just surface you know I feel like I'm just getting started and it's funny that you mentioned about the overnight success thing because I was actually on a podcast the other day and the girl was like yeah Lauren like you just you made it so quickly and I was like well first of all I've definitely not made it there's definitely a long way to go 
<laughs> you know, I've been doing this for like a decade now. She was like, whoa, a decade? I was like, yeah. Have you not seen how many posts there are on my Instagram feed? And by the way, I've probably archived about 10,000 of them. And uh, I just thought that was quite funny because, yeah, it legit has been a decade since this moment that we start speaking right now that I've been doing content online, on social. Obviously, back then it was fitness. So to your point, I think that really, like, when it comes down to... I think you do activities and when you do an activity, you receive a response from the market or internally in how you see yourself. And so the more positive response that you see in the marketplace or from people around you, then the more you are spurred on to continue going. So the confidence comes with the success. But if you don't yet have any success in the real world, then it's really hard to be confident in what you're doing. So naturally, that's why I think it's really important to get those quick wins under your belt very early on. And I was very fortunate when I was younger to just be like a total executor. I would just go, 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 go. And I posted on social media for years without making a penny. The first money that I made was because a, I think it was kind bars yeah well hey they're getting some good promo now they paid me 250 pounds to make a post on my instagram and then that was the first money that i had ever made so oh, i thought oh the way to make money brands getting you to pay to post their stuff which obviously now i know if they're paying me to post then they're obviously making a multiple of what they're paying me back from the the campaign so i was able to see that this does work i can make money doing this thing and so then that just gave me the confidence to just keep going because I knew that the time I'm just like focusing, I'm doing the thing, I'm putting out stuff to the world. I know that it's going to come back around somehow because like I've seen evidence that that is true. And so then when I first started selling fitness programs, yeah, like eight years ago, then the first time I did it, it went really, really well because I did it in partnership with someone that had been doing it for years. And so he coached the guys, I coached the girls, and that was how I kind of got a boost of success. And then we kind of had a chat and we were like, well, to be honest, our business is so different because you're a dude's business, I'm a girl's business, so let's go our separate ways. And because I'd already had the success, I knew that I could do it, I had the client testimonials, I had the results, and then I just went all in from there. And I had made money, so any money that I was like spending on back then I was like, I had no idea what I was doing. I was like boosting boosts and, you know, buying these gifts for my clients, hoping that it, all this stuff would work. And obviously none of that did work, but I had the, the, the kind of cushion in, you know, the previous success that I had had to allow me to be confident to this day. So to come full circle on this, I think every level in which you achieve a new milestone, there's more problems that come with it. And there's also then a path in which you can see that you can go even further. And so what's that concept um, where like, no matter how much success you have, you always like feel like you want to have more. I think that's a really, do you know the name of it? Um, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna kill me because I can't remember. But basically that concept is so real. And I think when you get real with yourself about that always being a fact, then it comes down to minimizing the mindset of potential negativity that comes with always wanting more and then being able to be present in the moment in where you're at right now and appreciating the hard work that it's been to get there. So something that I've been telling my boyfriend lately is like, we need to celebrate more. Like we need to go and actually enjoy. And and even if we just had a week where things went well and there were no fires, like let's go celebrate that and so that's something that we're working on more often now because i think when you celebrate then you're also putting out a message to the universe like hey give me more of this amazing stuff and i know that may sound like a bit woo woo especially again we're both british so it's kind of not out back in the uk but i do believe it to be very true because when you celebrate then i think that the universe begin begin begins to give you more of the thing in which you're celebrating for i completely agree i actually did a linkedin post today which went really well about uh, small wins so it's really cool to hear you say that and actually just i actually remember um when we started our entrepreneurial journey a couple of years ago and seeing your your name pop up lauren and i followed you and started looking at what you're doing and i was like hang on i remember lauren tigner from i think five or six years ago doing other bits and bobs and you know all the girls in the were already you know excited about it around bath and, and that area so that's mental to see it come full circle yeah, yeah. So it's not, i want to um we're coming to keep you too long. So there's a couple of questions that I've asked all the guests so far that I really want to just put to you. One of them is just to book a book if you've got one that comes to mind. And it can't be Atomic Habits. 
I actually don't even, I don't know if I've even read that book. I think I've just listened to him on audio so many times that like, I know, <laughs> I know his concepts because funny, funny, random thing though. I actually had never finished a book until about <laughs> until three years ago. So yeah. I used to, I used to, <laughs> I used to, it's so bad. I actually vividly remember it because the lockdown was about to happen and uh, I was flying home and I had a really long flight. I was in Mexico. So I downloaded this book by Keith Cunningham called The Road Less Stupid, which is an awesome book, by the way, which isn't my recommendation. I'm going to give a better recommendation in a minute. But I remember downloading that book and my journey was so long. I listened to the whole thing and I thought, crap. I've not read an entire book ever, except this one book called Knots and Crosses that I had to study in English literature in high school. <laughs> I love that book, by the way, and I can probably just remember it because I actually finished it. But so then I actually realized, oh, I really like audiobooks. And so, yeah, so, to this day, I literally, I, I don't even know if I've ever finished reading a, a physical book. I just, I don't really like it. So let's think. Now I've read, I did. Thing. I did a book a day for 30 days just to test myself, which was fun. I made a YouTube video about it. But what comes to my mind, bearing in mind who your audience is, uh, I'm trying not to give like super generic. The first thing that comes to my mind though, that I really liked is the David Goggins book, the audio book. That is so good. That's such a good book. And then like more of a tactical book. Um, Hmm. Give me a genre. Self-development. Okay, self-development. Hmm. I I have to check my notes. Yeah, David Goggins actually is a great shout. That's in my wish list on Audible. So I definitely that's that. really well. I need to give your I need to give your people the best. Ah, okay. Well, it's not really personal development. But That's okay. All of Robert Cialdini's books, what influence, vision, these are insane. And I think they're very underrated as well. I, I don't know why nobody talks about Cialdini anymore, Robert Cialdini, but like his books for sales, marketing, for, yeah, just, just general persuasion as a whole, these are so amazing, and I think more people need to read them. That's a great one. I've never heard. I've actually never heard of it. Robert Cialdini. Yeah, his name is like C-I-A-L-D-I-N-I. -I. Cialdini. So good. Perfect. There we go. Perfect. And then the last question I've got for you is, um, if you if you had a full free day, how would you spend it? Yeah, I actually have phone free days quite often. So last weekend we were in the desert in this random place in Colombia and we were just walking and hiking outside. We went on this tour. And then after that, we went into the tour of like the salt mines, which was really cool. And there was just no service. And also, because my phone got stolen, <laughs> I basically have my old phone. And funny my thing, I was in Colombia last year and you're meant to register the SIM card that you get, but I never registered the SIM card. So they've actually blocked the EMEI of that phone. So I can't even have a SIM card anyway. So I guess I'll have a SIM card free day tomorrow when I'm going to travel down to the coffee region, drink some coffee, take a walk outside, ride some horses. So just anything to do with being in nature, I think is really refreshing for the mind. And I used to be this person where I would literally work Monday through Sunday. And I still don't really believe in weekends because I think when you're a business owner, you get to choose to take the weekend whenever you want to take it. The weekend could be on Wednesday. And the beautiful thing about taking a weekend on Wednesday is that nobody else is actually out doing anything. So you get to do activities in a more quiet environment, which is such a and also it's uh it's 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 usually cheaper on on these days where it's not the peak season so you get to do stuff for like a, a better price which, you know that's pretty cool so to your point though uh something about being in nature and then my point was going to be this yeah i used to hustle like all the time and i would work from like 6 a.m until like 9 p.m or even 10 p.m every like every day and i'd take breaks to go to the gym and take a walk and while i would do that i would listen to audiobooks so still having my brain turned on. But now I just find I'm, I have way more energy because I actually take time without my phone. And uh, 
it's crazy because even a year ago, I didn't think I would be this person, but it's honestly paid dividends. And I think it's made me a lot of more money and also a way more productive person and a better leader for my team. Yeah, I really resonate with a lot of that. We uh, we take Wednesdays on our like desert day or go to the desert or something, do something a bit fun. Yeah, I completely agree. Lauren, um, everything is linked below all your social media. Where is the easiest place that someone can find you? Yeah, whatever social platform. So you mentioned LinkedIn. I'm also on Instagram, just Lauren Tickner, L-A-U-R-E-N-T-I-C-K-N-E-R. That's the best place. And uh, yeah, you can find more stuff there. There's links in the bios and everything. So go check it out, connect with me and say that you came from there. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us. A great time in the, in the coffee region tomorrow. Thank you so much. I will. It will be fun.